Hey everyone, welcome to our second week for Momentum. Today, a lot of topics that we will be covering are a little bit more in depth than on the AP exam, but we still do recommend that you watch this video to understand it because a lot of these skills will be really helpful in application. Continuing where we left off last week, we can also have collisions in two dimensions. Just like in kinematics, X and Y components are both go of velocity are both independent of each other. So because of this, momentum has to be conserved in both directions, which means we need um, two equations for our conservation of momentum. We can see that here um, when we set up our equations, we're going to want one for X. So that's going to be like this X component of the final velocity. And in one equation, and the y components of the final velocities in the other equation. And now we're gonna be shifting a little bit away from momentum, but still talking about a really important idea, which is center of mass, which will in more complex videos be applicable to momentum. So just first up the simple definition, the center of mass is a unique point which, in which the weighted position of all the vectors sum up to zero. And in really simple objects like this disc or a ring, it's basically the center of the object. But when we have more complex objects or systems, we have to think about it as X and Y components and use sort of an average to solve for it. And these are the two formulas. And the, important, the reason that this is really important is that when we act on this object or the center of mass, it's sort of how the uniform force would act upon. So we can pretend that all the mass is just concentrated on that one point, which is what we call the point mass. And then that allows us to solve for the movement of the object with less complexities. And if you think about it, it's like if you push a ruler on the side, it's more likely to rotate. But if you push it in the middle, it will move forward in a straight line. And because you're, it's moving in a straight line, you know that you're pushing at the center of mass. Yeah, the center of mass is also the place where you can balance an object. So if you have like a pencil like this, if you try to hold it, um, if you can find the center of mass, it'll stay there. Whereas, as Tommy said, if you push the force in the wrong direction, it'll just fall. And so um, moving beyond just one object, we can also have multiple objects and find the center of mass of all of those objects at once. And that's what we call the center of mass in a system. And it's basically the same formula. You find the mass times the position of each object, and you add them up, and then you divide by the mass. And then the result is basically that you'll get the location where you can consider all the masses concentrated. Um, along with the center of mass, we, we also have the uh, center of velocity and um, the center of acceleration. And it's basically the same thing as the center of mass, except this is how, where the object is moving or accelerating. And so um, with this knowledge, we can compute the total momentum of a system, and we can compute the total acceleration of a system. So in the case of momentum, we know that momentum is mass times velocity. So we'll find the whole mass of the system. We can find the velocity of the center of mass, and we'll know the direction in which the momentum is also of the system. And the same thing for acceleration. We can use multiply by the mass to get the net force on an object. Now we're going to move on to some practice problems. Our first pra practice problem is collision in two dimensions. A hockey puck A with mass 0.1 kilograms traveling at five meters per second collides with an identical ho hockey puck B, which is at rest. Find the final velocity of the second hockey puck after the collision. This means speed and direction. If the final speed of the hockey puck A was two meters per second and the its direction is 30 degrees above the x-axis. And we have a diagram in the top to, uh, if you need help visualizing that. We'll give you a few seconds to pause and figure it out for yourself. Okay. So for this problem, we want to set up our two equations. Our first equation it here is telling us 
the directions in the x or the velocity momentum in the x direction. Our first term is just the initial velocity times the initial the mass of a because b isn't moving, so we don't have to worry about that. And then our second one is our fi our final or the second side is the final velocities and momentums. And now when we take that out, what we end up with is this. We end up with, um, we have to, since we don't know VAX, this final velocity, what we end up doing is we take this final velocity calls 30 for the X component. And then over here, we take the sine of 30 for the Y component. Now we just solve for the final velocity in each direction. And we just plug plug and chug from there to get our final velocities in each direction as 3.26 meters per second in the X direction and four meters per second in the Y direction. To find the magnitude, we just use the Pythagorean theorem to get 5.16 meters per second. And then we just do some trig, use inverse cosine, to find that theta is about 50.82 degrees below the x-axis. And now our next problem is gonna be center of mass. And this is a really basic one just to ease ourselves in. A 59 kilogram woman and a 71 kilogram man sit, op sit on opposite sides of a 3.5 meter long seesaw. Where is their center of mass? Just five seconds, pause the video and give it a shot. So first, it's really helpful to just set up our variables. Sometimes it can be helpful to draw also a diagram if you wanna draw like a seesaw and then place the two people so you know the distance and where you can maybe guess that the center of mass might be. And we know that the mass of the woman is 59 kilograms. The mass of the man is 70, oh, it should be 71, apologies. Um, and that the position of the woman would be at zero meters and the man would be 35 meters. Of course, you can place, you can just exchange these two because all we know is that they're on opposite sides. As long as you really understand where the direction is, if you say the, the position to the right or to the left, it will be fine. And then you can put the numbers in. Again, apologies, this should be saying 71. And then if the math were to be 73, you'll get 1.94 meters. And for the last problem, we have James, who's 90 kilograms, and Ramon, who's 60 kilograms, and they're 20 meters apart on a frozen pond, and 10 meters um, between them is a mug of their favorite beverage. So they use a rope and they pull on the ends of it, and it kind of stretches between them. Uh, when James has moved six meters towards the rug, how far and in what direction has Ramon moved? So again, we'll give a few seconds to pause, and then we'll continue. So this is an example of center of mass of a system. So as you can see in this diagram over here, um, which has illustrated the problem, the center of mass is not gonna be perfectly in the middle because James and Ramon are not the same mass. And so James has three halves as much um, mass as Ramon has, so the center of mass is shifted towards him. So with this knowledge, we can then compute the center of mass, which is gonna be the mass of James times his position, plus the mass of Ramon times his position, all divided by their total mass. So that'll be minus 900 plus 600 over 150, which is minus two meters. So as you can see in the diagram, the center of mass is two meters to the left of the cup or the mug. But when James moves towards the mug, his new X coordinate is minus four meters, right? Because he moves from 10 meters away to four meters away. So we can find the new center of mass by doing 90 times minus four plus 60 times, what is Ramon's new mass divided by the total mass? And we can get that Ramon's new mass is actually minus two meters. And so from this, um, we can, and that should be equal to minus two meters. And so from this, we can see that his new position is one meter and it should be equal to minus two meters because the center of mass is not changing. 
And just to add on to that, if it's confusing why the center of mass doesn't change, it's because there's no external forces on the system. So you can remain and just say that the center of mass stays in the same position, and therefore you can set it equal to negative two. But thank you so much for joining us. Hope you liked the video. Make sure to subscribe to our STEMI channel. And then of course, join our Google Classroom with the link below for more content, videos, and presentations and worksheets. Thank you guys. Bye.